Let's combat and fight back with Maltrax The war the minds, they want control of the masses And common core, it dumb us down in the classes Without knowledge, we can't gain access Build with the elders, take notes and write classes We keep whining on the block, how it's gonna stop Let's start supporting our own, make their supply drop We buy stocks, then we buy blocks Cause we know the truth and we tuned in to Dr. Maya Peace and love, family. Welcome to another Truth to Power Talk with your sister, Dr. Ma'at. Thank you for joining another powerful, powerful discussion I have with me tonight. Another powerful guest, but this guest is no stranger to the Truth to Power Talk with Dr. Ma'at. We have with us tonight our Dr. Al Baba, Dr. Kaba Kamane. Baba, how are you, Baba? My sister, Dr. Ma'at, I am doing fantastic. I just appreciate this opportunity. And I look forward to this evening's conversation. It's all good. Health and peace of mind, my sister, my Absolutely. family. Absolutely. So, Baba, I've reached out to you about, a, a, first of all, Baba, I want to just thank you um, from the bottom of my heart for um, just making yourself available um, whenever I call and I say, hey, Doc, you know, can you come on and, and teach the people about education or about spirituality? You'll say, well, sister, you know, I got this lined up, but you always seem to make time, you know, to come out and to educate the people. And so I want to thank you, Bob, just for, you know, being accessible uh, to me, being accessible to uh, my audience and to our people and, and, and teaching us. So I just want to thank you for that, Bob, um, from the bottom of my heart. Um, I thank you. <laughs> uh, you know, my sister, Dr. Ma'at, you are um, welcome. But it is also, if, if, if we say, if we are who we say we are as a people, this that we're doing is only natural. And so I appreciate your reaching out to me. And I appreciate everyone who is tuning in this evening to this conversation. Because to me, the most valuable time we have, the most valuable thing we have is time. So mm. thank you for this opportunity. Ashe, Ashe. Uh, so, Baba, I've reached out to you because um, you just you just released a new book, uh, Spirituality Before Religions. Um, so you just released this book not too long ago. And there's a lot of talk uh, about spirituality versus religion. And, and I know that you get into a lot of that in your book and family. It will behoove you to stay and pay attention. And I'm, I'm telling you for the entire interview, because we're going to give out tonight, we're going to give out 10 copies of his book. Baba made it. So initially I called him up. I said, Baba, you know, I can buy five. He said, no, 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 my sister, I support what you're doing. And so I'll double that. So if you buy five, I'll give you another five just to, you know, it's, it's about educating the people. And so we're going to give out 10 copies tonight of his book, spirituality before religions. So anyway, I reached out to him because there's a lot of talk about religions. You see people leaving the mosque, people are leaving the church, people are returning back to African spiritual systems. And so I felt like we should have a conversation about that. What is, you know, why do you think people are leaving religion? What is religious? What is religion versus spirituality? Why do you think people are moving back into spirituality? Uh, why do you think people are leaving the religion? So we're going to get into that. Uh, but before we do, family, I do want to share my screen with you briefly because Baba has a seminar coming up soon. And I want to make sure that we get this information out to you. Dr. Kaba, can you see your yeah. document? Okay, yeah. beautiful. So Baba, go ahead and tell the people what's going on. What do you have coming up? Okay. Let what, what I'd like to do, my sister doctor, if I can put it in context. Yes. So that folk can understand. Uh, four years ago, I began, I, well, five years ago, I started to uh, develop a concept. And the concept was I wanted, I found some things out. There were, maybe they were epiphanies. Maybe I came to understandings. In education, we call them aha moments. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they, they are moments of reckoning that you come to realize something, a light comes off in cartoons growing up. It's when that light bulb goes off on top of the head, you know, when you get that idea. And I said, and I realized there was something I realized. I realized that my, my journey attempting to, to figure this thing we call religion out 
I wanted to figure it out. I wanted to see it from a, a perspective. And because I, I was very much into cosmology, the Shabaka stone, uh, astronomy, astrology, I said, well, let me look at it a different way. And so when I began to realize and find out certain things, I said, I'm not finding this out for me. I think I should write a book. This was like about five, six years ago. And so I began a process. But then I came upon the ability to go on to a, a site where I could literally prepare the community, which I did in developing my website, kabakamane.com, where up on there, I put a six-day free e-course mm. online to prepare the community because I realized that I was about to present the community with information that up until that point, they may never have heard, or if they heard, they didn't see it the way in which I put it together. And so the six day e-course has been up maybe three, four years. My study guide is there also. The second step beyond the e-course was to publish the book. And as of uh, last uh, July 19th, 2019 and then July 29th when the paperback went up spirituality the book went up but then I said that's still not enough because the nature of what I'm attempting to speak to the community about cannot just be in a six-day e-course or in a book so I developed a 12-part webinar series of which we've already done four mm. we're about to do the fifth one but what I did is I broke the book down into chapters, into views to be able to present to the community. Because one of the things, of course, it's up on Amazon. Uh, the visuals are not exactly the way I want them, not to mention they're not in color. But in a webinar series, I can give you the visuals the way in which I want you to have them. I can give you some of the concepts that could not come through the book. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this webinar series is meant to extend the uh, the book itself and the idea itself because we have a lot of work to do, my sister, when it comes to this question. And one of the things about spirituality before religions is that I don't mention a religion in the book mm. because I'm not here to put down a religion and because I'm going to tell you something. I tell people, don't get rid of your Bible. Don't get rid of your, your Torah, the five books of Moses, uh, for, for the Hebrew faith. D don't get rid of your Quran or your Rig Veda or, or your Buddhist book of the dead. Don't get rid of those. Because inside those books, I can show you in Africa where all those scriptures came from. I don't have a problem with religion. I have a problem with the interpretation of the religion. Mm. The stories that I hear in Genesis... Those are beautiful stories for adults that know don't take it literal. But if you have a child's mind and you live in a fantasy world, then you will actually believe that there was created by God a man that they call Adam. But I'll show you in, on stone in Egypt in Kemet, I'll show you where Adam actually is Atum, which is the creative word. If you look at Genesis, you want me to believe that a God, an anthropomorphic person, man in particular, shaped a human man out of clay and then put the man to sleep and then operated on him and took out a rib and created a woman. I, I'm, I'm sorry, fam, I can't go with that story. That's a mm -hmm. fantasy. Mm. My, my mind can't get around that understanding the reality so that I, I didn't mention no religion, Sister Dr. Ma'at, and to anyone listening, because I just don't want that drama right now. Right, right. What I want is whatever religion you belong to, I want you to step back for a moment and find out where it came from. And mm. it came from melanated people. Every holy book came from Africa. 
every word, every utterance, everything that this world believes in their religions, I can show you e either carved on the walls of Kemet, or I can show you in papyri, or I can show you on walls and temples. Mm. I can show you every one of your religions, but I have to do it in webinar series. Now, the webinars we've done so far, is, of course, is you don't start anything without honoring your ancestors. Mm -hmm. And so the first webinar was to pay homage to our ancestors, particularly the ones I cited in the book, but both male and female ancestors that came before us. And so the libation and main points, the first webinar was just to take people into a place where you understand exactly where we're going to go for the next 12 months, because every webinar is the last Sunday of the month. 8 okay. 8 p.m. Eastern time, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Okay. Okay. And so then what we did is in the second one, we went deep down because see, we can't understand, even if you look at the concepts of spirituality from an African perspective, we always existed. We, you know, we just didn't appear. The, mm -hmm. the essence of every one of us, be she Dr. Ma'at, be he Kaba Hiawatha, or anyone else on the planet, animals, whatever, we all existed for all time and space in the waters of Nun, which is an African term of the universe as it relates to science. And so I paid homage to Dr. Jacob Carruthers, mm. Dr. Sheikh Anta Jump. I paid, I paid homage uh, to Dr. Nana Before or Dr. Asa Hilliard paid homage to Dr. John Henry Clark and to Dr. Ben. I paid homage uh, in, in, in the book itself to Dr. Shashi McIntyre and Dr. Jerry Price, two of the most dynamic female scholars that we've had on the planet last century. Mm. That was the first. And then in the evolution, I, I had to take you back in time. I had to take you back before the beginning began. I have to show you where you were in the gravity of space and time before time even existed. And then take you through the process of what we call evolution to help us understand what all of this is about. Because again, I'm dealing with science, Sister Dr. Ma'ad. I'm not into emotion and I'm not into the twilight zone. I'm not trying to take <laughs> folk places where they cannot fathom what's being said. I need to show you evidence. That's right. Dr. David right. said, don't tell me about truth and don't tell me about facts because they really don't exist. And it's true because today is raining in New York. Yesterday, it was sunny. Today, I, yesterday, I could have told you, you know, the sun is shining outside. That would have been a fact and it would have been the truth. But that's not the fact and truth today because it's raining outside. Mm. Facts and truth can change. Evidence never changes. Hold up, hold up. Say that again, Baba. Think about this now, because this is what Dr. David M. Hotep, the, the brilliant brother that authored the book, The First Americans Were Africans. I was talking to him. I said, yo, man, but you know what the truth is? <laughs> and he came and he said, wait a minute, bro. Let's think about this now. Let's not talk about truth. And let's not talk about facts, because they can change. The, the example I gave you was yesterday, the sun was shining very bright in New York. That's right. Today, where I am anyway, it's not like that. Yesterday, I could have told you it was sunny. It was beautiful. That was a fact. And that was the truth. But now today, when it's not like that, the sun is not out. And it's not that what we might consider a beautiful day, although I got beauty in, in rain, but it's not a fact and it's not the truth. So from yesterday to today, the truth and the facts changed. Oh yeah, Baba. Oh yeah, definitely. And that's what we believe in science. You know, we, we may, yeah, what may have been true yesterday, you know, might not be true today, depending that's on what it. evidence have been unearthed or uncovered. That's so I, I do, I do agree with that. And so yeah. Baba, I was under the, the, uh, the notion that this webinar was coming up. So you're saying that these webinars, like you've already done this? Well, the ones that you see now have already been done. Oh, but okay. But now when you look at the bottom, webinar number five, that's the one that's going to come on, I believe the date is August 30th. Oh, okay. Okay. But take us back. Take, 
but take us back to take us back to webinar two. I want you to finish with the evolution. Mm -hmm. Okay, the evolution was the idea that the creator of all, prior to coming into existence in the waters of Nun, the creator said, I want to know me. But because I am energy, because I am spirit, I cannot know me. But what I can do is if I should bring myself into existence, then I will be able to reflect back on myself to know that I exist and that I am the creator. And so over billions of years, the creator created the process of becoming, which is called in Kemet, Kepra. Kepra, the dung beetle, is the process of becoming. And so the essence of this spirit in the waters of Nun, which was matter, coagulated and began a process of becoming that would bring forward superclusters and clusters and galaxies and stars and planets from those stars. And on our particular third world, away from our sun, there developed a process of becoming upon which we as the human family are the masterpiece. And the bottom line is that the next webinar, webinar number three, mm -hmm. dealt with involution. And involution is after we went through all of our changes up out of the water, we went through the age of the, of the bacteria, we went through the protozoa, the single cell, we went through the, pro and mind you, the human family's in there now. We're there. And that's what's important to understand. We're there in the essence of the universe. Energy cannot be created, nor can it be destroyed. We have always been around, will always be around, and that's just the way science and spirituality has it. But as we went through the age of, uh, uh, from the single cell to the multi-cell, to the age of the fishes, to the age of the amphibians, the age of the reptiles, the age of the mammals, Mm. This is what webinar number two is going into. And also there's materials that I, I, I can provide for you that take you even deeper to where you have to go if, if you're interested. Because every webinar has bonus offers that take you to the next level of the particular topic you're interested in. But then as we went through the age of the mammals, we went through the age of, of uh, the six different forms of the human family. We went from Australopithecus robustus to Australopithecus gracile. This is what we're talking about in the book and in the webinar. Mm. This is the science of our existence. And then after that, we went to the Australopithecus right straight to what we call the homo line. So we were homo habilis, the human of ability to the hu uh, 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 Homo erectus, the human that stood erect, to the Homo sapiens, to the Homo sapiens sapiens. And then Homo sapiens sapiens went through consciousness that raised us up to the levels that we are right now. And at that point in time, when the hands were the right size and the lungs were the right size and the legs did what they were supposed to do and the brain was functioning properly, when the blood circulated right, when everything was right physically, all of a sudden there was an epiphany in this human being. And this human being remembered what the creator within him and her said before they even went through this process. And that is, I want to know me because I want to know that I am the creator having a human experience. Mm. And at that point, Evolution stopped because the heart was the right size, the, the, the lungs were the right size, everything was right, the eyes could see, the nose could smell, everything was good. This human began to involve. And as it began to involve, it began to search for the creator within. And we had generations, millennia of African people who had literally transform themselves into gods on earth. And that is where the Neturu come in, because they began to then begin to see the presence of the creator throughout nature. And then for thousands of years, this phenomenal activity was practiced amongst the Twa Mbuti people, the short-statured people we derogatorily call 
pygmy. These Twa Mbuti people transformed and grew like all the others, and they became the Kushites of Northeast Central Africa. These Kushites, who were the ascendants of their ancestors, the Twa Mbuti, traveled up the Hapi and established dynasties and powerful civilizations along the Hapi, finally ending up into Kemet. And so the point that I'm really trying to make is that with all of the different texts that I'm going to analyze, the, old, uh, the Memphite text, the Pyramid text, the Coffin text, the Book of the Coming Forth Today by Night, the Aten text, the Shabaka stone, you can't understand that if you don't understand the people that wrote it were Kushites who were Twa and Buti. Egypt doesn't exist. The old kingdom really doesn't exist as it relates. The reason why we call it the old kingdom is because we're still relying on the Greek Greco-Roman experience to explain to us their first encounter with black people. What mm -hmm. we have to look in terms of spirituality is to go inside of Africa and begin to look at the old kingdom as a continuation of the Napatan or the Kushite kingdom that existed generations before the first dynasty of ancient Kemet. So that chapter on the Kushites and that webinar number four is very important to understand. You can't understand Kemet if you don't understand Kush. If you understand Kemet from the perspective of Europeans, then you have room in your mind to think aliens could have done the pyramid. That's right. And, and Baba, they do. <laughs> they do, That's Doc. Right. They do. That's they right. think, they and think they credit to everybody else. And they even will tell you that there were religious systems that built the pyramids when we know historically that the people that they claim that were enslaved to build the pyramids did not leave their homeland in Iraq until 2000 BC. Mm. That's their evidence of their historical journey from Iraq or the city of Ur, we today call it Edessa. The fact is, is that their leader, their family, the ones that they give credit for, for having established their faith system did not leave Iraq until 2000 BCE, before the Common Era. But we know the pyramids were already up and running and functioning 2,880 years before the Common Era. So in other words, how could you claim to build something that existed at least a thousand years before you even decided to get up out your house and move to the place that you said you built them? That's right. That's right. And, and Baba, I just want to I want to plus one what you're saying. Um, I'm thinking about, you know, how we you know, how can we still believe that the that aliens build the pyramids in lieu of all the evidence? We have the bones of the pyramid builders. We have the names. A lot of them, um, they, they worked in gangs. And so their names was written in red ochre on the stone. Uh, we have the construction plans. In, in the papyri. So we have this stuff and you still have people, you know, in spite of the evidence who believe this stuff. Absolutely. It, you know, it's, it's so much there right now. And again, my sister, Dr. Ma'at, uh, the purpose behind spirituality before religions was meant to bring this into place. That's right. That's right. And what we're going to do for the next five, I think it's four or five webinars is that I'm going to combine chapter four with chapter five, which are the chapters on the dynasties and the texts. So the next webinar that we have in August, looking at the old kingdom, is going to look at not just the old kingdom and who they were, but we're going to look at the Memphite text, which is a very important document that has been created. Just been in, in, in terms of understanding the Memphite text, you have to understand the old kingdom. The Memphite text came up out of Kush and they established that concept. That's, so, what, that's the next webinar. So, so Baba, the next webinar you said is going to be on August the 30th. How can we sign up for this webinar? You just go right to those uh, uh, sites. That's why I, I shared that with you. 
okay. uh, to the Amazon. You you can even get the the old ones also. One through four you can get now. Okay, so what I'll do, Bob, is I'll post these links from okay. this document under this video so people who want to look at the old webinars and sign up for the new ones, they'll be able to access it. So I'll copy and paste uh, the link. Is there a fee, Baba, for the webinars? Yes, yes, there is. It's going to which one that, that you're going to go with. I I, okay. I, I, I don't handle the pricing, somewhere around $20, $25. And then the bonus offers are an additional amount because – there's other PowerPoints in the in because I couldn't say everything I wanted to say. There's there's a piece in the Kush. The bonus off. I, I I did some deep research into the Twa and Buti people mm -hmm. because you see we talk about Kemet in Egypt, beautiful should be. We talk about Kush, but we don't really have a handle on the Twa and Buti. These were the original. Fam when we talk about life came from Africa, we're talking about the Twa and Buti people. We're talking about a people that lived in places like the Aturi Forest in what is today called the Democratic uh, Republic of Congo. The, the, the San people, the Kung people of Southern Africa were part of the original people. When you look at the face of Nelson Mandela, you're looking at a man whose complexion is not as melanated as some of the other African people. You're looking at a man whose eyes are very small. In fact, you might be tempted to say he looks Asian. But what we don't understand is that he comes from the, a people called the Khoi Khoi. The Khoi Khoi people are, are derogatorily called the Hottentot of Southern Africa. The, Sa, uh, the San people are derogatorily called the Bushmen. One of the first languages spoken, if not the first language spoken, according to Dr. Obertashaka, brilliant brother wrote a book called The, In the Intergenerational Gap, is the click language. Because the click in terms of the formation, you see, this is the other thing about African folk, because we deep in it, but we just don't know how deep we're in it. Even in hip hop, the beats that you're listening to are related to the click language of Southern Africa. We don't even realize how related those two things are. The, the, the beatbox, the things that we do with our mouth to make sounds beyond what we can do. That's all related to the original language because you gotta break up consonants from vowels. When you get into the study of language, I see this is the beautiful thing because you know, as I researched my sister, Dr. Ma'at, I, I, I learned so much. In fact, the more I learn, the more I learn, how much more I have to learn. <laughs> the click language is consonants and vowels. The reason why we have vowels is to separate consonants because our mouth couldn't form back-to-back -back consonants. So what the original people did is that they connected consonants together, which became clicks. Doc, I just want to plus one something you said. You said the more you learn, the more you figure out that you got to learn. And you know how they say that a wise man know they know nothing at all. You know, you 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 start learning and you're saying, hold on, wait a minute, I got more to learn. So you know, yeah. you know, a wise person knows that they don't know anything because knowledge is infinite, Baba. Yeah. You can never you can never know it all. But I want to take this time to just thank everybody for tuning in, family. We're talking about spirituality before religion with our Baba, our doctor, Dr. Kaba Kamene. Thank you for joining us at this time, family. Please, please, please go to your social media pages, share this video. If you have not subscribed to my channel, I know that some people are watching on Facebook, head on over to YouTube, subscribe to Dr. Oyama. I click the notification bell so that as soon as I go live, you will be notified. Baba, I see that I have my French brothers, French speaking brothers and sisters from some people from the UK, some folks right there from French there in the building. So I want to take this time out to say hotep to those brothers and sisters. And I see a lot of my, my usuals. Thank you so much for supporting the platform. My son, Jalen, he's in the building. He's under Jalen's corner. Uh, so thank you, son, for joining in. But go ahead and continue, Baba, please. Well, the other thing, since you, since you spoke about our family in France, Mbote is a concept of greeting. I've, I've, you know, since I've done some interviews with my brothers and sisters, in France and in the French speaking uh, community. Um, one, you know, like I say, hotep, well, mbote is one of the words we use that bring us together. So I just wanted to share that mbote concept. M-B-O-T-E is another concept. Uh, the idea that we're looking at 
in spirituality before religions. And also somebody I see made a mention. The webinars are not on Amazon. The book is on Amazon. Uh, if you go to Philippe Matthews, if, if, if you can't get it through what Sister Doctor is doing, you, you can go to Philippe Matthews and you can get the, um, the uh, downloads of the webinar there. But the webinars are not on Amazon. The book is. Uh, you know, the idea is each webinar is meant to expand the book itself because this concept that we're dealing with is, while it is very simple, it is also complex if you don't think through nature's eyes mm. and if you don't hear nature's voice. Our first teacher was nature. The first teacher on the planet was nature and the first students were the Twa Mbuti. Mm. We have to understand who the Twa Mbuti, the original human beings that were somewhere between three foot eight and four foot two with the towering giants being five foot one. And in this presentation, I show you pictures of the Twa Mbuti so you will see them and understand who they are beyond a shadow of a doubt. And the other thing is that the book is subtitled Spirituality is Unseen Science and Science is Seen Spirituality. African folk that are deeply rooted in spirituality, no matter what their faith system is. I've met Christians like this. I've met Muslims like this. I've met Hebrew Israelites like this. I've met Rosicrucians and, 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 and Buddhists like this. And the fact is that they don't believe in God. In fact, when I do presentations, sometimes if I want to get the, the congregation like in place, like listening to me, I start my presentation off by saying, I don't believe in God. Mm. Hold on. Wait a minute, Doc, because look, my mother, she's watching. She's in the building family. Okay. I know you see mommy. her name. <laughs> Mommy's in the building, but go ahead, Doc. Mommy, Doc my aunt, okay. <laughs> like what I say, let me say to Mommy, give me a time to explain what I'm going to say. <laughs> and, then I, and then I followed up with, I don't have faith in God. Ooh. But before you get up out the pews, give me a chance to explain something to you. Go ahead, Baba. Bring it home. You can lose your faith and you can stop believing. But once you know, you know, mm. I know God. I saw God this morning. God was brushing his teeth, <laughs> washing his face. I watched God walk out the house. So the point that I'm making is each and every one of us is the creator having a human experience. And every one of your holy books say it. You know, your holy book will tell you that you are you were created in the image of God. Mm. But what did I just tell you what I did when I went into the bathroom? When I went into the bathroom, the person I was looking at was my image. That person that I'm looking at and me is the same person. So if the creator created us in his and her image, because they have a problem, because that's another thing. My head can't get around a male God only. I can't handle it. My Come mind. on. Come on, Baba. Teach. Teach, Baba. But I can't. And that's scientific. It, it, it is by nature that there should be more women on earth than men. There should be more feminine principle than men. I didn't say it. Science said it. Mm. That is why a woman has two X chromosome and a man has one X and one Y. It was meant through science for women to outnumber men three to one. I just happened to get my daddy's chromosome. My older sister got my daddy's X chromosome. That's what made her a woman, a, a female. That's what made me a male. I got my daddy's Y chromosome. I gave my my, uh, 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 you know, my two daughters here, I gave them my X chromosome, but I gave my Y chromosome to our son, Heru. That's science. And so in that configuration of one quarter to three quarters, I can't get around the fact that there's only a male God. It don't work with me like that when I see so many sisters so many women around me. That's common sense. 
And so when I look at that and, I, and when we do that involution piece, I show you where the concept of the duo creation comes from. It wasn't a man and woman that God created. It was a spirit and a body that the creator created. Because mm. I because I still am trying to figure out Adam and Eve. If, if, if that happened, that he created a man and then he created a woman from a rib of that man and then they had two sons Cain and Abel well how did the rest of the world come into existence something going on here now because somebody could have been arrested if they lived nowadays doing what they were doing back then that's right so scientifically in my mind I have a problem with this but why why do they give you this story because in the in the Eurasian the European Asian fantasy world, mm. they know that if they go back to the truth, they're going to have to say that the Eve gene, the mitochondria DNA, come on, Baba, was not of one woman, but it was a group of women because right. every human being that has ever existed on the planet can trace their existence back to the feminine principle. That's the only way we know our existence is through mitochondrial DNA. Brothers, we did our thing. It, it, because of our ingenuity, and dedication, love, respect to ma'at, truth, justice, and righteousness. And because of our understanding of our role to our women, together we created this. One could not exist without the, without other. the other. That's right. So it, it's not about one being better and one being worse, good, bad. It's not that. That's not that's, how universal thought works. That's right. Compliments. Compliments, Baba. That is what it is. That's Complementarity. Exactly what is. That's right. If you have two sides, okay, if you get rid of one, you automatically got rid of the other. That's why in the story, you'll never get rid of Satan. You'll never get rid of evil. You can't get rid of evil. Because the day you get rid of evil is the day you get rid of good. Because how do you know what is good if you don't know what is evil? And how do you know what is evil if you didn't know what was good? So our ancestors didn't have concepts that ranged like that. And we're caught up in a world that we, we done lost our minds. Insanity. Insanity, Baba. We, it's, it's insane. It's insane. We're caught up in insanity, Baba. I mean, I, you know, I don't even want to get into the whole, you know, this video just dropped, Baba, a few days ago. Um, I, I don't even feel comfortable even talking to you about the video. It's so vulgar. And people are actually defending, you know, the, the vulgarity. And, it, and it's really sad, Baba. So like you said, it's, you know, we're really caught up in insanity right now. Absolutely. And those that follow will follow. That's right. I love our people unconditionally, but I just don't have time for you. Mm. I just mm. don't have time for you. Mm. And so as I begin to look at this and begin to develop what it is that we have to do, we just have to move forward now. That's right, Baba. So so let's get into this because there are a few questions in the chat room, but I want you to break down, Baba, what is the difference between spirituality and religion? Some people use those words interchangeably. I don't. Um, but what is your definition of religion? What is your definition of spirituality? And could you compare and contrast the two? What I see is spirituality is the parent, religion is the children. Mm. Religions came out of spirituality. However, your creator and your system, your, philosoph your philosophical system is shaped by your environment. So when you come from a tropical climate where the creator gives to you all things you need for sustenance and to nurture you, when every day is a summer day, when mm -hmm. every day fruits grow and vegetables are there, and during good times, of course, because there were challenging times in terms of agriculture. But in those times, it was a And so you created an environment, a loving environment, because your creator loved you, because your environment gave you everything. In fact, that was your economics, because that's what economics means. Echo comes from a Greek word, 
It's a black word, African word, but we'll leave that alone. It comes from oikos, O-I-K-O-S, which means environment or home. Nomi is to know, like ecology is to study and to, and, and to understand your environment. That's what ecology is. Economy is to know and understand your environment because that is the source of your wealth. Mm. And so as, as we developed an understanding of all of this information that we were getting, we, we understood that that was where our strength came from. But now when those same Africans that ventured up north and got caught in the ice age, where temperatures dipped as far down as 400, 420 degrees below zero, sometimes even colder, for long, for long periods of time, you can imagine the type of attitude you're going to have in that type of weather and climate. So your God is an angry God. It's a jealous God. Mm. Your God is, is the creator that will take your baby out of your arms and freeze it right in your arms so that your baby will die. So you have a hostile, angry. Your God is angry. It's hostile. Your God lies because on one level you thought God loved you, but look at how you're treating me. How could you love me? Your God becomes a liar, a cheater, a thief. A murderer. And, don't, don't forget that, Bob, a murderer. Murderer and all the other things that come from that. So imagine this northern African returning back into the southern lands. He's going to bring the concept of his God with him. She's going to believe that the man is God and that she's to be used by him. And they brought that concept back. And when they were introduced to these spiritual systems, they couldn't understand it. It was too deep for them. They didn't have the spiritual enzymes to digest this mighty message of ma'at and truth and justice. And so what they did is that they twisted it. They contaminated it. They interpreted it so that it would go to their advantage. And in that process, they created the religions that we know of today. And so when you see black folk adapt Christianity, we take Christianity to a place that Eurasians just don't have it. When, when we get into uh, Buddhism, when we get into Rosicrucianism, when we get into Islam, there is no group of people who claim to be Muslim, more Muslim than the nation of Islam and the five percenters. You can't leave the circle seven out. You can't leave the Moors out. You can't leave the seven percenters out. You have to understand Father Allah and who Clarence 13X was and what he did to Islam, which was, by the way, an African fascism that came from Ethiopia and went into Saudi Arabia. So that when we talk about the difference between spirituality, nobody practices Christianity better than black Christians do. You talk about having a love ethic to love your enemy. Europeans don't love their enemy. They don't even love their friends. In fact, they don't even love themselves. Thanks. Dr. Clark used to always say there's two things that you know Europeans never created. Christianity and democracy. Because they ain't never acted like a Christian and they have never been democratic. And that is the one thing that, that stayed on my mind. And because I came out the Roman Catholic Church, I saw contradictions. I was saying, wait a minute, I need help here to help, help you understand. I still have uh, 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 marks on my knee because the nuns used to make me kneel on the grates in the church because, I, well, I had a question. Here's, here's, here's a question that, that, that got me to kneel on the grates because I dared to ask this question. I say, sister, you say that God is great. She said, yes, God is great. And God is really great. Yeah, God is really great. I said, well, if God is great, then isn't the mother of God greater? <laughs> uh, you know, like mama was around before the baby was. Mm. So if the mother of God is held up to such a high esteem, and you're saying that's the mother of God, 
then isn't the mother of God greater? That, that's just common sense. That's coming from an eight-year-old mind. Because I know when I was going home to see my mama, my mama was great. That's right. I tell my mother all the time, she's divine. I said, my, you're my co-creator. You're divine. Hey. You and, know? But, but, but if that's true, if that is true, I knew that my mother was here before me. So if I'm said to be great, if the child is said to be great, then how much greater must the mother be? And that's the Osarian drama. But you can't understand that story if you don't understand the African roots of the philosophy of the Osarian drama to understand that story from the deepest, most powerful level that you, in fact, are your savior. Another thing I do when I speak to brothers and sisters who lean towards one of the major religions in the United States, I tell them that they, they, they say to me, uh, is Jesus my Lord and Savior? In fact, I did a presentation one time and I was talking and there was a sister who was very much into her religion. And she said, uh, I just want to know one thing. Is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? And I said, yes. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. There was a little ruffle in the room. A couple questions later, a brother got up and said, yo, you know, brother, I'm, I'm really surprised that you said that because after all you've been teaching and talking about, for you to be up there saying that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, brother, come on, can you explain that to me? I said, well, you know, there's a challenge with both of y'all. And I pointed to the sister that asked me the question about Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. And I said, there's one thing that neither of you asked me. You asked me a question. You both asked me the question, from your perspective, but you never asked me what was my perspective when I answered that question. Mm. And I said, sister, you asked me if Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And I told you, yes. And brother, you questioning why I would believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord, because neither of you came to realize, had you just asked me one other question, you would have understood exactly what I meant. I am Jesus Christ. Ooh. I am my savior. If I am to be saved, it is up to me to do that. The story of the Osarian drama tells us that each and every one of us are both our parents and our child. We are the pyramid. We are our savior. We are the emancipatory force within us that's going to liberate our souls when our spirit leaves our body. So Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior because I am Jesus Christ according to the Asarian drama because Jesus Christ is Heru, the resurrected one that came forward from his parents to bring the civilization to its highest level and to be able to understand the two cosmic principles of the planet. Number one is to realize first and foremost that each and every one of us is the creator having a human experience. The second is that we are to treat the creator's creations as we would treat the creator in each and every one of us. Mm. Mm, Baba, that, I mean, Baba, what you just said, I mean, you said we're, 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 we're the creator having a human experience and to create, cre to create, to, to treat creation like the cre like we're treating the creator itself, himself or herself. So none of that, uh, I have dominion over animals. I have dominion over this. So it's not about dom dominating and conquering, you know, it's about, uh, living in harmony, you know, with, with self and with nature. Do I hear you, Baba? That, that exactly what you're saying is, again, it's the interpretation of the word domain and dome. You, 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 you have to, from your own perspective, we were given, we became the mat to whom much is given, much is expected. Mm -hmm. We were giving through, through atom, atum, the ability to have three gifts. Humans have three gifts three gifts that separate us from all of the other animals and a slight lead over gorillas. We have the ability to have intellect. These are our three gifts. 
intellect, reason, and language. Intellect is the accumulation of information that becomes knowledge, that when reason becomes wisdom, and language allows us to transmit that wisdom that we know. Intellect, reason, and language. That's the, that's the three gifts that separate us from all of the other animals. And whether we like it or not, every organ, every gland, every muscle, your lungs, your reproductive system, your brain, 99.9% .9 of everything humans are, so are gorillas. From a scientific perspective, gorillas, we did not evolve out of the gorilla. But gorillas or apes and humans have yeah, a common ancestor. Common ancestor. And see, and see, the Armin Raw Squad have been, we've been teaching that Bible for years. And people say, oh, you you believe in Darwinism and you promote, you teach and promote Darwinism, and that's that monkey stuff. And you're trying to say we come from monkeys. And I'm like, Baba, it's not hard to comprehend this. We have a common ancestor, you know, and then when you get into African spirituality, you understand that everything is interconnected. Everything is everything. And that's what the African knew. Everything is everything. Everything is interconnected. That's so it. when you start talking about common ancestors and, you know, monkeys and gorillas, people are like, no, chimpanzees. What? What do you mean? I'm, I'm 99 point. What is it? 98 point nine percent the same as a chimpanzee. They, you know, people frown at that, Baba, yeah. you know. Well you, well, you know what's interesting, my sister, Dr. Maatma, uh, when I went to uh, the Bronx Zoo in Congo land, go, you, know, you, you know, I was walking along with my family and all of a sudden I heard a pss, 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 and, I, and, I, and I looked over and there was a gorilla and he called me over. And he, he, you know, he said, you know, brother, we, you know, we got your DVDs in the back. We'd be checking you out. We'd, you know, we'd like your stuff. <laughs> He said, but, you know, we hear a lot of other things people say about us. And I just want to let you know, this is what the gorilla told me. He said, I just want you to know, go back and tell your people, we don't want to be identified with you. Because <laughs> y'all don't even, y'all, look at how you act. Come on. Come on. We ain't had a fight in here since I've been here. And I'm the oldest one in here. We ain't had a fight up in here. Come on. And so, you know, what becomes interesting as we begin to deal with this situation Gorilla say, you don't even know what to eat. Hmm. You threw a Big Mac in here. We would we would keep the lettuce. We'd look for some of the peanuts, but we throw everything back at you because we don't eat that stuff. Go gorillas live more according to nature than humans do. And this is just a reality. This is just what we see in science. Every and you know, we, when we look at gorillas, you see the black hair, but the only place that you don't see hair is in the front, and right here is black, and that's because of the science of the relationship of the sun to organic life on Earth. And but bottom line is, when you if you shaved a gorilla, a gorilla would be pale. That's right. It's the blackness of, and if you don't believe me, just go and just have the gorilla, just ask the gorilla to lift up his arm and, and, and she'll show you that underneath here is pale. Yes, that's right. So, or if, even if you can look through the hair, you'll see, because the, the science of, the reason why Africans became melanated is because when we started losing our hair on our body, we had to make up for the heat loss system. And in order to do that, we created very special uh, sweat glands. And as we developed sweat glands and we lost the hair, the skin had to change from its pale type of color to a black color. And that's what created the darkness, the pigmentation on the skin. Whereas on the gorilla, the blackness of the hair of the gorilla is where melanin presents itself in that particular organism. And plus, if you look at the lips and mouth and face of a gorilla, in fact, I'll, I'll, I'll share a picture of, of, of you, which was taken down off Facebook when I put it up. But it said the next time a white person says you descended from gorillas, show them this. And it shows people of European descent and they show you gorilla. 
go, go, gorillas don't have lips like human beings, like black human beings. Gorillas have very thin lips hmm. like Europeans. Hmm. Their, their brow ridge is very much more like a European than it is an African. So when, when you look, and again, all of that happen, has to do with science, but when you're dealing with science, you begin to realize that science is seeing spirituality. Spirituality is right in front of us all to see. Like right now, what we're going through, this is all nature right now. Be it from the pandemic to uh, the, the, the rising above the community, all of this, the stars are crossing right now. And we are in the middle of the return, which is the last chapter in the book. And it's the 11th webinar. There is the return of the black cosmic mother. Make no mistake about it. Mama is coming back. And when we were there watching our brother crying out for mama, he wasn't just calling out for his mama. I'm talking about George Floyd. Mm. He just wasn't calling out for his mama. He was calling out for mama earth. He was also calling out for the black cosmic mother and she's returning. We are moving into the age of Aquarius. This is science. This ain't twilight zone here. Look at the changes that you occur. We just had this hurricane that came through. In my experiences, it may have happened before. It could have happened. But for the most part, I experienced, we in New York, in Florida, experienced hurricanes towards the end of August and September because the hurricanes ride on the waters off the west coast of Africa. And as you move through the summer months, the water gets hotter. As the water gets hotter, the hurricanes become stronger. So that by the end of August is when the water between Africa and the American hemisphere is the hottest. We just had a hurricane that when I walk outside my door, there are trees laying on the ground. I never experienced that before. Mm. I'm not saying it never happened. It may have, but I have never remembered. I remember Katrina right around when school starts, end of August, beginning of September. That's when the hurricanes start coming in. We just had one in the beginning of August. And why? Because there's a warming trend. What is the warming trend? The warming trend is a call from the black cosmic mother telling us, I'm on my way. Get ready for me. We better get ourselves together. The base of it is to understand spirituality and understand the difference between spirituality and religions. This is our journey. This is my own personal journey, my own study. I've been taking notes on this book for many years. I don't even want to give a time to it. Through my evolution, I've read more books. Five years ago, it dawned on me. This ain't just for me. This ain't just my journey. I have to write down some of the things I found out because we've been living an illusion. Mm. But even someone else's illusion, if you believe it, becomes your reality. So we really do believe that there was a man that was put on a cross and crucified a, approximately 2,000 something years ago. Despite the fact that that same story can be found around the world in 16 different cultures thousands of years before Jesus to Christ. And his name could not have been Jesus because the J did not exist in this language until 1600s. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It didn't exist. His name couldn't have been Jesus. His name could not have been Judas. And they could not have been Jews because the letter J did not exist. That's right, Baba. Teach. Oh, help me, fam. <laughs> I Teach. need help, you know, in deciphering this because there's the, here's the key. The story that I unfold is a beautiful story. If you see it as a metaphor, Jesus is a beautiful story. When you think about this brother walking the earth, he was so poor. He walked the earth with one sandal at times. He didn't even have enough money to buy a pair of sandals. He was the type of brother that would go out into the desert. This is the way the stories go. This is the metaphor. It's a beautiful story. 
But if each and every one of us could be like that, we wouldn't be in this situation we're in now. Mm. Jesus would go out into the desert and fast for 40 days and 40 nights and come back. And one, one of his students would, would, would have a cool glass of water for him. He was parched by the desert, but he'd see a child off to the side parched. He'd say, no, give the water to the child. You know, you, I mean, you know what kind of human being that is that does something like that? That's a beautiful thing. If we did that with each other, we wouldn't have these problems that we have on the planet. But we were rudely interrupted by a people who knew not the creator. And this is the predicament we find ourselves in. Mm. Well, family, what I want you to do at this time, because we are running out of time, and I promise that Bob and I were going to give away 10 copies of his book, Spirituality Before Religion. I don't know if you all can see it. Spirituality Before Religions. So Bob have already sent me 10 copies. I have to go to the post office tomorrow morning to pick them up. Um, and so I will be shipping them out ASAP. But what I want you to do in order to win, I see we have... 50,000 people watching. There's really 53 people watching, but 53,000 people watching the um, the live stream on between Facebook and YouTube. And so what I want you to do, family, in order to get a copy of this, the first thing I want you to do is like the video. Come on over to YouTube, like the video. If you're on Facebook, like the video. The second thing that I need for you to do is head on over to YouTube and subscribe to my channel, Dr. Oyam Ott, and be sure to hit the notification bell. I repeat, after you like my video, whether you are on Facebook or YouTube, head on over to YouTube, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell. Then after that, I want you to like my Facebook page, Dr. Oyam Ott. After you finish those three things, I want you to share this video on your social media page and tag me. All right. Tag me. And once you finish this, I want you to type done in the comment section. All right. So again, like this video, subscribe to my channel on YouTube, like my Facebook page, Dr. Oyama. Ott, and I'm looking, I have my phone right here, family, so I can tell if the numbers are going up. All right, so like my Facebook page, Dr. Oyama Ott. Then I want you to share this video and tag my Facebook page. And so let me give you my names on Facebook. You can tag this page, Dr. Oyama Ott. So this is one of my Facebook names. I think Mr. Richardson is going to win every book that I put out there. <laughs> and this is my other Facebook name family. All right. So this name, hold on, let me share it. Okay. So you can tag Dr. Oya Ma'at or you can tag Deanna Bailey. All right. Dr. Oya Ma'at or Deanna Bailey on Facebook. So why Dr. Why Dr. Cobb and I finish wrapping up this conversation, I'll be looking to, um, to announce the winners. But Baba, again, thank you so much for your time. I know that I actually have come on for an hour and we're we're over. So I do appreciate, you know, your time, Baba. So again, okay, so I see people are saying uh, they tag me in a post. I see Brother Richardson. So Baba, continue. So I'm doing this. I'm going to put together a list of winners and announce them at the conclusion of our discussion. Well, you know, family, I just, again, I want to thank you, my sister, Dr. Ma'at, for this opportunity and to all of those who have tuned in uh, to this conversation. I also appreciate and respect your time. Uh, again, I encourage us all to begin to look at uh, spirituality before religions as it relates to each and every one of us to understand that you are the creator having a human experience and that how you treat the creator's creations is how you treat the creator. You know, when we're seeing so many people profess all of this re re religious religiosity, but at the same time, they can defame another human being. Or, or mm. get, you know, that just doesn't work. Moral exaltation precedes intellectual illumination. You know, no matter how intelligent you may think you are, if you are not moral, then you're not on code. That's right. The Panther Code is Ma'at truth and justice, righteousness, reciprocity, to understand. Because if people understood what goes around, comes around, I don't think a lot of people would be doing what they're doing. If you knew that what you're doing is going to come back on you, sometimes sevenfold, 
You would think twice before you speak to somebody a certain way or treat somebody a certain way, before you act a certain way. This is ma'at. This is the code. Everybody's talking about being on code. Being on code is being and walking with ma'at, which is truth and justice and harmony, respect and ethics. This is what built the pyramids. But that love of wisdom, that philosophia, is also what put us on plantations. Mm. You have to know the difference between your friend, your enemy, and your ally. And sometimes we, people in general, but if I may speak on African American in particular, we have a problem knowing the difference between a friend and an ally. We understand the enemy thing. Well, sometimes we have a problem with an ally because sometimes we perceive our ally to be a friend, whereas not realizing that that ally can become more of an enemy after the deed that you joined together against a common enemy, your ally can become a worse enemy. That's right. Because your ally is not your friend. Here's the example. After, during World War II, Russia and China, Russia and China, World War II, were our friends. Germany was our enemy. After World War II, Germany and Japan became our friends and Russia and China became our enemies. We were allies during the war, but we became enemies after the war. Sometimes we hold on to our allies too long because mm. they were never our friends. They just align with us to get something done against a common enemy. But after that common enemy is defeated, your ally can become your, your, your ally can become your enemy. And your enemy could become your ally. Lessons that we have to learn. I'm still working on it. That's a fact, Baba. That's a fact. And I see that we have the the, the, the tags are, are coming in, Baba. I'm trying to, the tags are definitely coming in. I see Brother Haru. Actually, I see two Harus. So let me go back here. Let's see which one this is, Baba. All right. So I see Pan-African Designs in the Pearl. Family, I don't, I don't see a tag from you. Uh, Sister Bridget, I, I see that you type done, but I don't have a tag um, from you on Facebook. Uh, Brother Haki Sankofa, I don't see a, a tag on Facebook. So just if you could, I don't know, mention my name in the, the comment section or something so that I can see that you have, um, so that I can see that you actually follow the directions. Carleen Jr. Yeah, it says done, but I don't have a tag. So let me go back here. I'm looking on Facebook right now and I see, oh yeah, I see Sister Queen T, uh, Ferris, Haru, Nefertiti, Haru, Aset. Um, I see Doc Toons. Oh, I do see Carleen. Carleen, I, you're right, sister. I see you. Sister Carleen. Junor. I see it. All right, Baba. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and get some of these out. I won't hold you, Baba. I thank you so much for coming on. I actually have three names down so far, but I don't I don't think I need you on, Baba, while I distribute it out. So I can let you run. If you want to hold tight, Baba, and continue to talk. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, we're here. We're here. Okay. And, okay. and, you know, their time is as valuable as mine. So, you know, we can just keep doing what we're doing. And, again, you know, you can go. The best way to get it is Amazon because the post office act a little funny. Uh, sometimes. And so uh, Amazon is the best way to get it, the clearest way of getting it right now. And so if you're interested in spirituality before religions uh, as a book, uh, you can go to Amazon and uh, you can purchase it. Can I tell you something else for just to understand how the algorithms work? Because we're in a different world right now. That's right, Baba. It is one thing. And I'm talking about social media right now. 
because I'm on Instagram now and I'm noticing a, a, a change in um, people that are tagging and going into my Instagram compared to uh, um, when I was just on Facebook. Now, Facebook and Instagram, they're the same company now. But when you purchase, and I'm speaking for all the authors, I'm talking about Dr. Clyde Winters. I am, I'm talking about all of the great writers that have books out on Amazon that you can purchase. Purchasing the book has its place. That is good. Duawu, thank you very much. But what is equally important for the future of that particular writer is if you write a review of that book on Amazon. That really does matter. I, wouldn't, I would say it's two thirds that you bought it, that's great but it's one third that you reviewed it. It's not more important, but it does have bearing on that author's future as they relate to their writing projects in the future. If you review a book, no matter what the book may be, even to this day, you can go back and you can review some of the work of Dr. Uh, Sheikh Ante Diop. You can review Dr. John Henry Clark. If you review the work, that makes a difference in the future of that particular author, not just the book, but that author in terms of the next book she or he may write. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind in the future as you're moving through this social media, because this is the future right now. What we're doing right now is the future. This so-called pandemic we've been under has proven the importance of digital nomics. Because I've been to Baltimore a couple of times doing presentations, having a phenomenal time with my Baltimore family. But in this pandemic, look, we still can come to you. We just and come to you from a different perspective. Dr. Ma'at has mastered this technology to be to bring different educators and, and people to the community. This is the future. Support it because it's going to happen. And like you say, we're talking to people around the world. You know, we're, you know, we're not just talking to people that are that are local. We're talking to people in the world, around the world. So this new technology has its place. See, I believe we need to take it over, tell you the truth. That's what I say. That's what I, yeah, that's right, Bob. And stop using the um, technology for foolishness. Like you said, use the technology to unite and to build something. That's not it. just a yeah, not just to share, you know, meaningless videos and all of that crap and gossip and all of that. Let's let's use this technology to our advantage. I couldn't agree with you more. Absolutely. Let's take it. Let, well, we don't want that started the World Wide Web. It was black folk that invented that. It was black folk that invented the cell phone. You know, and when you get into this 2G and 4G and 5G, that was black people did that. It's just that we don't have the distributing power to be able to own our own thing right now. But it's coming in time. Time will tell. Absolutely, Baba. All right, so I have five names in front of me, Brother Everett Winchester, Brother James Browser, Sister Carlene Jr., Haru Aset, and Dr. Toons. Please inbox me your shipping address so that I can get these books out to you tomorrow. So what I'm going to do, Bob, is just go to the post office and just, just mail them out, Bob. <laughs> just mail them out when I get there. So I have five right now. Brother Everett Winchester, Brother James Browser, um, Sister Carleen Jr., Haru Aset, and Dr. Toons. Please inbox me your shipping address so that I can get this book out to you tomorrow. And when you do, send it out uh, media. Yes. Yes, Baba. So I'm getting ready to look for five more, Baba. I know that I'm, we're getting I'm ready. I'm learning all this. I'm, I'm learning all this as I go along. So many things have, have grown over the past couple of years uh, in, in, in terms of growth. And it's, it's just very exciting, family, to know that there's so much more to learn, so much more to learn and so much more to do. We owe it to our children. We owe it to our children who are yet to be born. We owe it to our ancestors who put all of this in place so that we could do this. They didn't do what they did to leave us like this. Mm -mm, not at all. Know that. Don't believe it. Don't have faith in it. Know it. You can lose your faith. You can stop believing. But once you know, you know. 
and when you know and don't want to know, that's called cognitive dissonance. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And that causes major headaches. So avoid the headache. Know the truth. Know the truth. Know the truth. Know the truth. Okay, it says Brother Haru. Okay, so I said I just sent you a friend request. I'm surprised that it went through, brother, because um, I'm surprised it went through, brother, because I'm up to 5,000 friends, if that's what you want to call it. And um, hmm, let me go back out of here and see if, um, oh, I see Haru Ra Netter. Yeah, still allowed me to. Let me see if I can respond to it. I thought I had. 5,000 friends. Okay. So brother Haru, I don't see a tag. I don't see the, the video on your page. So I see that you have some stuff posted from July the 31st and from five days ago or well, three days ago, but I don't see this actual video shared on your page. Um, brother Haru, sister Bridget, she said, I don't know how to tag you on Facebook. Sister Bridget, um, if you cannot fat tag me on Facebook, what I want you to do is just give me your Facebook name and I'll just go to your Facebook page to see if you shared it. So Sister Bridget, please indicate in the chat, what is your Facebook name? And I'll go on Facebook right now. I'll look for your page and I'll see if you shared the video. All right, go ahead, Baba, continue to speak. I'm searching for five, five more people, Baba. Okay, well, you know, what's interesting is as we move through this process, uh, there, there, there was a part in the book uh, that deals with the old kingdom and the pyramid text where I'm, I'm actually uh, showing you where the Eucharistic feast came from. I'm showing you in utterance number 273, 274 in the pyramid text. I, I actually, um, through the um, interpretations of Dr. Theophilio Benga, who was a, a student and a uh, colleague of Dr. Sheikh Antijok, where the concept of of eating bodies and drinking bloods come from, mm. but it was a metaphor. It was a metaphor as it related to understanding the science of the digestive system. You've heard the proverb, you are what you eat. That's right. And so if that be true, when you're looking at you are what you eat, what you ingest is what you become. And so there, there, there is a scene where the divine human uh, transforms into the bull and begins to eat the gods. And it's really quite a scene that is created in this utterance, in this story. But it was a metaphor that when you dine of the when when you dine of the divine, you become divine. When you ingest the gods or divinity you become divine. So people get caught up in the eating of the gods, but what, you're, what is imbalanced in, your, in the interpretation is the fact that the gods don't represent anthropomorphic beings. They represent characteristics. So imagine that you're saying, okay, I'm gonna eat truth. I'm gonna eat balance. I'm going to eat harmony. I'm going to drink reciprocity. I'm going to drink respect. Okay. You wouldn't have that much of a problem understanding that because you'd be seeing these concepts being ingested as opposed to what we perceive to be God, which is an anthropomorphic being. That when you get, and th there's a piece that I do in this particular webinar when I'm dealing with the pyramid text, where I actually go through language arts. Be before I even tell you the story, I got to go through language arts. I, I have to go through figurative language. I have to go through the metaphor, the simile, personification, flashback, foreshadow, symbols. I go through that because I realize what I'm about to drop on you. You, you have to know the difference between myth and reality before you can understand what's going on. Because it, it, I grew up Roman Catholic, like I say, and I remember uh, 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 the, the, the body of Christ. And then all of, you know, and then you open your mouth and the priest puts that host in your mouth. Okay. Like growing up in my head, I was eating that little round wafer. 
But I was saying, this is the body of my savior. Family, that scares me. It really does. Mm -hmm. Because what's on my mind is that I'm actually eating because the priest has done this magic on the altar where he has turned this wafer into the body of Jesus Christ. And then the blood was the wine and the water. But the wine was the essence. This is called transubstantiation. The concept of the blood was the mixing of the water and the wine. Transubstantiate. Trans means across. Substantia means substance. So you're taking a substance and you're crossing it over into something else. You're taking a wafer and making it the body of Christ. You're taking wine and water and transferring it into his blood. But the wine is the essence of the liquid of life. It's the fermentation of grape, which is the process of becoming in nature. The water is the cosmic or the spiritual water. So that when they said that Jesus Christ was both man and God, the man was the wine and the God was the water. So when they transubstantiated it and brought it into one essence, which was put into the chalice that he drank. That was the essence of as above, so below. Mm. We can explain this scientifically, but if you get caught up in taking it literal. That's when the problem comes into play. It, it, it most definitely is because you can't substantiate anything you say from that point on. Exactly. And that becomes so important, family. And that's where so many of our young people who contact me uh, and our people in general contact me and say, you know, like the church ain't working for me no more. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's just not solving my problems and meeting my needs. I mean, it's solving the needs and meeting uh, uh, the problem, uh, uh, you know, solving the problems and meeting the needs of the pastor because <laughs> he got a new Lex. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and it take him two hours to get into where the church is. So there's a problem. There are people who are having problems with this. And if the pastor came at the congregants understanding that they knew that they were God having a human experience, the pastor would stop trying to be the mediator and understand that he, like them, are one to move forward. Because I know churches that are doing dynamic work for the community. They're buying a apartment complexes, making sure that the uh, congregants have a place to live. There are programs that make sure the congregants eat and have clothing. I know dynamic systems in place. But if your church is not solving your problems and meeting your needs, you better find a new temple. That's right. And the first temple you need to find you'll find in the mirror because you are God having a human experience. Bob, I have, I believe, two more, three more names. I'm trying to check Sarah in the suit. I believe I have, hold on one second, in the suit. Let me see if Sarah shared it. I'm looking on Facebook, right? Yep. So I have uh, three more names. Baba, I'm looking for a young lady, Miss Bridget. Um, she She's having issues sharing and tagging. But um, the three names I have, Sister Happy Love, Brother Marvin Gay, and Sarah Nasut. So please, family, um, if you heard your name called, just inbox me on Facebook, your shipping address so that I can get um, your book out to you. Brother Dr. Tunes, I don't have a shipping address for you, brother. I don't have a shipping address for you. So be sure to inbox me your shipping address. All right. I see someone named Na Aku. Na Aku, I don't see you on Facebook. I don't see you on Facebook at all. I've been searching for your page. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for it right now. And I don't, I don't see your page on Facebook. Shoot me a message. Um, Shoot me a message on Facebook. Inbox me a message so that I can find you. 
but I don't see you on Facebook when I search for you. It says Harura Netter. Let me check you out. He says that he shared. Haru. Haru. Ra Netter. I can't even find you on Facebook. Um, Haru. I see a Haru a set, but I don't see a Haru Ra Netter. Is your name spelled the way it appears on? Um, <laughs> I see you now. Now I said I'm not used to. Oh, here you said it's called Ra Netter on Facebook. Okay, so that's why I couldn't find you. All right, Bob, but two more people. Okay, I see Rod Netter out of Dallas, Texas. And we run in the same circle. We have 287 mutual friends, Rod Netter. Rod Netter, um, make the post public. I don't see, the last thing I see that you posted was from two days ago. Um, I don't know if you have a lion as your profile picture, but that's what I see, a lion as your profile picture. And the last thing I see is a boxing match. All right. Yeah, so if you can make it public, uh, please show me. Haki said, Kofa, what, who are you on Facebook, family? Who are you on Facebook? Haki saying Kofa, who are you on Facebook? Are you high, un, are you under Haki saying Kofa? Oh, okay. See, I could see. I could see. I didn't know. Uh huh. So you're under a different name. And let me see if I can find this name. Okay, yes, that name popped up. Yep, yep, yep. Now let me see. Yep. Okay. All right. Haki Sankofa, go ahead and inbox me. Haki Sankofa, please inbox me your, um, okay, I see you, Pan-African Designs. Peace and love to you. All right, Haki Sankofa, please inbox me your shipping address. I have one more name. Oh, Sister Bridget, I've been, sis, I've been waiting on your tag or waiting for you to inbox me and say something. I don't have a message from you at all. Um, I don't have a, a message from you, Queen. And I would love to give it to you because we have a lot of brothers. I believe there's only two or three sisters who want a book. And so I'm trying to, I've been holding out on you know, trying to help you out. KB Carleone. Um, I've been looking for that name on Facebook and can't find it. KB K dot B dot Carleone. I can't find you. K dot B. Carleone. Yeah, I cannot find you. C O R L E. Yep. I searched for you a few times. I see Car Carleone Giovanni. I don't, I don't see that name on, um, I don't see that name. And now a cool. All right. So now let me go to your face. Let me go to your profile picture if I can. Oh man. Uh, all right, Bob, one more person and I'm trying to get to, some people said, I don't know how to tag you. Um, some folks don't know how to tag. So I don't know what's going on, Baba. So yeah, Sister Bridget, I'm trying to help you out. Yeah, nah, I see that you sent me a message, but um, I'm trying to click on your profile picture and it won't allow me to bring up, oh, hold on, it says details. It's saying that we aren't friends. I can add additional details, but it's not allowing me to bring up your, oh, here it is. Okay. Hold on. Here it is. Yeah. So not a cool, uh, I guess because we're not friends, I can't see your profile. So if you did tag me in something or you shared the video, you would have to make the, you would have to make the, the, your post public so that I can see it. You had to make your post public. So I can see it. The only thing I see is that you updated your profile picture back in 2017. That's the only thing that I see. 
All right. So I'm on your, 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 your profile right now, but it won't let me see anything else. All right. It won't let me see anything else. All right. KB.Carleone. You said you sent a request. So let me go there. You said you sent a friend request. So let me go to you. And hopefully this will be it, Baba. Baba, I appreciate your patience. Thank you so much. Oh, they're, they're, my sister, this is all us. We're doing this together. So it's all good. Their time, your time, my time, it's all valuable. Yes, sir. None more than the other. You sent requests and let me. Okay. All right. So Sister Carleone, you said you sent a friend request to Deanna Bailey. But I don't, I don't see it, Queen. I mean, are you under a different name? Because I really, I don't see a friend request from you. Yeah, I don't see a friend request from you, Queen. Yeah, I don't see a friend request. Let me go back. Oh, I do. I see it now, and I had to refresh. KB Carleone. Let me see. There it is. So that's the last name. That's the last name, Baba. K dot B dot Corleone. All right. So these are the three. These are the 10 winners. Our brother Everett Winchester, brother James Browser, Corleen or Carleen uh, Janor, uh, Haru Aset, Dr. Toons, Sister Happy Love, brother Marvin Gay, Sarah Nusut, Haki Sankofa, KB Corleone, please, please inbox me your shipping address tonight because tomorrow when I go to the post office, I can just pick up Baba's books and I can mail them out to you tomorrow. Again, please send me your shipping address tonight because I don't want to, you know how it is, Baba, you don't want the back and forth and then someone's shooting you, then I got to go back to the post office. There's no telling um, when I will get back to the post office. So make sure that you inbox me your shipping address tonight on Facebook so that when I go tomorrow to pick up his books, I will uh, mail your book out at that time. Baba, do you have any, any closing words for the listening audience? I would like, just like to say to the community with all of the research that I've done, that I'm going to do a webinar where I'm dealing with the new kingdom and the Aten text. This is my point. I also say it in the book and I explain why what I'm saying is true. The wealth of the future is in solar power. Mm, that's and where everything, the of the that's, that's where everything's headed right now, Baba. Like you exactly. said, yeah, but, solar energy. And we were once there. In fact, we have degressed in terms of our energy. A civilization is only as great as its energy source. There are four different sources. There is the earth source, which is number one. Number two is solar source. Number three is galactic force, and number four is cosmic force, uh, uh, energy. Right now, we're on the Earth. We're drilling in the Earth. We're taking up oil. We're, we're, we're taking up all sorts of different things. We're using wind. We're using water. Our ancestors were able to capitalize on the things of the Earth and then begin to access energy from the sun. There are those that believe that the pyramids themselves are nuclear power plants where they fused the uh, nuclear power of hydrogen into helium, and they are able to use that as a power. We are on the earth. We no longer, as a society, focus on that. And now we are depleting the earth. We are fracking up. We are trying to take the natural gas from the earth for the energy. We're trying to take the oil to put in our cars. We're using wind and water. Those are earth sources of energy. When you get the solar energy, the sun will give you immeasurable amounts of energy. And not just that. Isn't it interesting that where the sun shines the brightest, the people are the most pigmented? <laughs> In our own backyards, the creator has said, here is the energy of the future. We have to teach our children solar power. Start simply by getting a book on the sun. If you want to start, get a book on the sun. 
get a book on renewable energy, get a, a, a child's book on solar power to help them understand the future wealth. There are no heirs you're going to put on the end of your name to understand how rich you are. There's no millionaire, billionaire, trillionaire, because your source of wealth is going to be so abundant. The, there is no concept of wealth because you'll have it all because the sun is here. Then there's going to come, to come a time when you're going to use the sun to be able to access galactic power. So imagine each and every one of us having our own star as our source of energy. You know where you're going there? It is obvious by certain pictographs in Comet, they were aware of galactic energy. That's a conversation for another day. I talk about it in the book. Oh, oh Doc, look, I can't wait to, 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 to dig in uh, to the book. Family, your book, the people who won the book is on the way. And Baba said that if we cannot... If you if you didn't win a book tonight, just head on over to YouTube and that YouTube, Amazon, go on over to Amazon and purchase your copy of the book. Dr. Kaba, thank you so much, Baba, for, for coming on the platform. I really every time you come on, I learn a great deal of information from you. And so I thank you again for your time and for your information and for this wonderful resource, this gift that you have have given us, this wonderful resource or reference book that you given us. So thank you again, Baba, for coming on. And so we got to, I got to, I'm, I'm a want to be one in the number for your webinar on August the 30th. I okay. have to be one in the number. How long is the, how long is the webinar before we go? I'm just cu curious. Two hours. Two, hours. Oh, two hour two, webinar. That's two, fine. Ten. Now, let me tell you something else that happens with going into the webinar, the last Sunday of every month, the first Sunday of every month, we have complimentary to the uh, webinar itself, we we have a two hour uh, question, answer, and comment session. Okay, all right. Because I realize that once you go through the webinar, think about it. You need a week. Come back, and you'll be able to join. There's no charge for the question and answer. Okay, beautiful. All right, beautiful. So, Doc, We're without two hours, two hours, okay. eight to ten, both Sundays, the last Sunday and the first Sunday. Last and and, and, and Baba, that's eight. PM to 10 PM. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, my sister. 8, 8, 8 okay. PM Eastern time. Eastern Standard Time. PM Pacific time. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, and that's going to be on August the 30th. So what I'll do, Bob, is I'll go through the document that she provided me and I'll cut and paste those links under this video. So for those who are interested in participating in this web webinar, you know, once this video has uploaded, give me until tomorrow evening, family, to come back to the video and to um uh, cut and paste the links under the description. All right. So family, join me back here on Thursday at eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I have brother Marcus Klein oh, coming on. Man. Yes, brother my Marcus man. Klein. He's he's coming on to talk about um, we're going to be talking about education, uh, activism. And, and I mean, he's going to go in. He's a he's a dynamic person, a dynamic speaker, a dynamic teacher. And so I'm looking forward to him coming on. So family, join me back here on Thursday at eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so that as soon as I go live, you will be notified. Thank you for tuning in tonight, family. Peace, love, and positivity. Peace and love.